Barnett, and welcome to the second half of Writing in Five Paragraphs. To pick up where I left off in part one, Sheridan Baker, author of The Practical Stylist, tells us to write with the book, not the newspaper in mind, and gives us two standard rules for constructing our paragraphs. First, plan for the big paragraph. Quote, force yourself to four or five sentences at least visualizing your paragraphs as about all of a size. Once accustomed to a five sentence frame, say, you can then begin to vary the length for structural and rhetorical emphasis, letting a good idea swell out beyond the norm or bringing a particular point home in a paragraph short and sharp. Second, find and start with a topic sentence. He explains that a paragraph is an essay in microcosm in that it too has a beginning, middle, and end. Quote, the beginning and the end are usually each one sentence long, and the middle gets you smoothly from one to the other. The last sentence is the most emphatic. This is your home punch. The first sentence holds the next most emphatic place. It will normally be your topic sentence stating the small thesis of a miniature essay. Here's a paragraph chosen at random from Malcolm Gladwell's essay in the New Yorker, September 6, 2004, called The Ketchup Conundrum. He writes about the fact that mustard now comes in many varieties, but ketchup has remained the same. You can pause the video to read this paragraph or go to www.gladwell.com and click on the New Yorker archive to read the essay in its entirety. I've highlighted the topic sentence in yellow. Sheridan Baker reminds us, quote, if your topic sentence covers everything within your paragraph, you are using your paragraphs with maximum effect, leading your reader into your community block by block. If your end sentences bring him briefly to rest, he will know where he is and appreciate it. But Mr. Baker is not yet finished with us. He then goes on to break down the structure and organization of paragraphs within an essay or chapter into three types. The beginning paragraph or funnel should evolve from your broadest, most general concept to the most focused in particular. You want to capture your reader's attention with your first sentence, keep her engaged, and conclude the paragraph with the heart of your message. Baker feels that psychology dictates that you end your beginning paragraph with the thesis sentence. You've got the reader's attention and only have to deliver the point of the chapter or essay. The middle paragraphs are full, well-developed, and transition from one to the next smoothly. These are standard paragraphs, each little essays unto themselves. They open with a topic sentence. Most critical is the smooth transition, and Baker gives us a couple of techniques. One technique is well known to us, the transitional words he likens to stepping stones. These include but, however, nevertheless, therefore, indeed, and of course. His second technique may be unfamiliar to you, but it does make for a smooth and effective transition. He suggests that you repeat a word or phrase from the final sentence of the preceding paragraph. As you read other essays and pay attention to transitions, you'll find writers have many different techniques. The fact is, it really doesn't matter how you get from one paragraph to the next, as long as the progression is smooth and comfortable for the reader. In the end paragraph, or inverted funnel, you need to wrap things up by first reasserting your thesis, then summarizing and emphasizing the key points. This paragraph is the complement and inverse of the beginning paragraph. So open with your thesis sentence and end with a more sweeping statement. These might be important implications of what you've just written about, or even an open-ended question or idea for further thought. Here's a delightful little post from marketing guru Seth Godin that I think shows off the paragraph perfectly. Pause and read this. I think you'll see that all the elements are there, condensed 
but there. Remember, the medium determines the size of the paragraph, and this was taken from Seth's May 15, 2010 blog, which you can find at www.sethgodin.com. I've enjoyed sharing this writing in five quick tip in part because it takes me back, dare I say it, some 40 years when I was first learning to write with style. And even now, I appreciate a refresher course. It helps me, too, to recall the rules so that when I choose to break one, I do so deliberately and not out of carelessness or neglect. As Baker wrote in his preface, quote, nothing here is really new. I am simply describing the natural linguistic facts discovered again and again by the heirs of Aristotle, in which lineage I seem inescapably to belong. For I have found that the one practical need in all writing is to mediate gracefully between opposite possibilities, between simplicity and complexity, clarity and shade, economy and plentitude, the particular and the general. As you listen to this and all our writing in five quick tips, Matilda Butler and I hope to inspire you to examine your own writing practices and philosophy. We invite you to visit Writing Alchemy online for more audios and videos. That's writingalchemy.com. In our book, Writing Alchemy, Matilda and I present a revolutionary new method that puts the writer in control of the creative process. We believe that just using the various elements of good writing is not enough. You want to use them deliberately. Writing Alchemy will help you integrate all the elements into your writing effectively, turning your words into gold, hence Writing Alchemy. Thank you for listening, and now it's time for you to put your reading, dreaming, and wishing aside and get to writing.